everybody, and welcome to a very special episode of GameSpot Presents Now Playing. I've got Cameron Christian here from Insomniac Games, ready to guide us through the upcoming Resistance 3 multiplayer beta. Cameron, oh, yeah. thanks a lot for sitting Definitely. down in the studio. <laughs> All right, so you guys are you guys are launching soon with the multiplayer multiplayer beta. It's live now to a, uh, a select number of very yep. lucky folks. Um, go ahead and introduce us by you know give us a general idea of how you approached the multiplayer design of Resistance Three after you guys completed work on Resistance Two. Yeah, definitely. Um, I guess one of the biggest things we have going right now is that we've shrunk our player count. Right? I mean, it's one of the, the biggest things. We went from like. 40, 60 people down to 16, mm -hmm. right? And one of the big reasons for that is like, we brought back the weapon wheel, we have abilities and things like that, so we really wanted to show that stuff off, right? And having the 40 player environments, you know, fun, crazy fun, <laughs> but like, you just can't show off a lot of these awesome effects and abilities and get that like in your face combat that you right. can get with these smaller numbers. So that was kind of like the backbone for starting the design, the multiplayer of um, Resistance. Uh, one of the other big things is like we really wanted, we liked a lot of aspects of the like co-op mm -hmm. from Resistance 2 where there's a lot of teamwork, a lot of working together and we wanted to kind of pull some of that into the multiplayer, right? And so that kind of started us on the outline for coming up with like abilities and things like that. Um, and so like with that when we started coming up with abilities, we kind of started coming up with abilities that kind of could be used selfishly but could also help your teammate, right? And then we also had abilities that were completely selfish and that just kind of like helped your gameplay style. Um, and so that was like the start of the evolution and we started um, just trying those things out. Originally we kind of started with more locked classes, right? But we wanted to do something a little more free-flowing and so we kind of like broke up those things that made the classes awesome and fun and kind of distinct and made them into abilities so you can mix and match and really kind of like create your own character and your own kind of like gameplay style. All right, let's, uh, let's actually start by talking about the maps because it's interesting that you guys aren't, you're not really doing uh, locations from the, the story campaign, right? It's completely different areas? Yeah, yeah, I mean the, the maps in um, the multiplayer are spread all around the world, you know, and it's kind of to showcase that like the Khmer have invaded everywhere, you know, and they have a presence everywhere. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, we we go from like this map right here, which is uh, Glamorgan, Wales, mm -hmm. you know, to um, Bogota, Colombia, and just all over. You know, we go all over. One of the cool things that one of our sound designers did is we have radios in each one of the multiplayer maps that mm -hmm. have like little radio broadcasts in the language from that country, and it kind of adds a cool little atmosphere to to the map when you're in that certain area. All so right. we, we really wanted to kind of like showcase that this is happening everywhere. Okay. All right, so obviously we are playing uh, Team Deathmatch currently? Yep. All right. Yeah, Team Deathmatch. Uh, he's currently on the uh, Camaran side, right? With, you can tell kind of what side you're on because we have two different HUDs. The Camaran mm -hmm. kind of has this blue tech HUD mm -hmm. and the humans kind of have kind of an old school yellowish HUD. Um, He's buckshotting people in the <laughs> face. Uh, actually, Cameron, one interesting uh, design decision I want to ask you right off the bat here is that um, you guys are maintaining regenerating health for multiplayer, yes. but not single player. Yeah, and that you know that was an interesting decision, you know, because we went uh, back and forth with um, both the single player health and the multiplayer health, and. You know, we found that we didn't want the regenerative health in single player because, mm -hmm. you know, it really made you feel like you had to survive. You know, you really had to fight. Um, and, you know, we thought about it in the multiplayer sense, but then, like, what does that mean? Do we place health packs anywhere, everywhere? Does it become kind of littered with stuff all over the place? And because it's kind of a fast game mode, um, it actually ended up working better just to have the regenerative health. Okay. Now, we iterated on that a bunch. It used to happen really fast, mm -hmm. right? But things like we have some of the abilities that regenerate health, you know, and give you health. And those weren't, like, showcasing as awesome as we would have liked. Mm -hmm. And so we ended up reducing the, the regeneration rate. All right. Uh, so those things actually do make a big difference. Let's, uh, let's talk about some of the, the abilities that we're seeing here. Um, what, are, what are these two abilities that okay. uh, James has equipped right so now? So currently what James has equipped is, and what you're seeing on the screen are the active abilities. Right. And he has Spotter, which he just activated. Um, and what Spotter does is, it's actually on the cooldown right now, it kind of draws a red outline around your enemy when you sight over them. Mm -hmm. And what, what happens with that is they'll show up through the environment as you can kind of see that guy running off, oh, right? Yeah, there you go. And he, 
he's kind of like a marked target for all your friendlies. Mm -hmm. The other bonus to that is that if anyone kills that guy, you get bonus XP. Oh, nice. Right? So, so it's another little teamwork thing to kind of like help out. Um, his other ability he has is Doppelganger. And this is kind of like a projected hologram that he can activate, and it runs right alongside you and kind of mm -hmm. copies your movement and anything. And it's, a, it's great for kind of messing with the enemy, you mm -hmm. know, because they're not quite sure who to shoot. Oh, okay. Um, now, once they start shooting it, you can see that it kind of like starts to fade right. a little bit. Flicker a little bit. But like off the first jump, like if they shoot him, it's going to give you enough time to like oh, counter okay. him. Interesting. Um, and so, yeah, we, we have a bunch of little kind of like misdirection things like that, too. We have uh, another ability, which is like a, a decoy. Mm -hmm. And rather than being kind of um, a hologram that follows you, it is kind of like a hologram that stays in one place. Mm -hmm. And when you upgrade it, it turns into a little bomb. And so it's one of those fun things to kind of like mess with people. You know, I'm going to set it over here. I'm going to go hide in this corner, and hopefully I can trick someone into coming and trying to get, get them. You know? nice. So lots of little fun things like that. Um, oh, if you see right now, he has just earned a, a Berserk. And what our Berserks are, they're essentially our kill streaks. Mm -hmm. um, he right now is on the third tier Berserk, which is um, Mutate. And essentially, with this kill streak, you have to kill nine people in a row. Right? And when you do, if you're on Kamaran's side, you mutate into a big Ravager and you essentially get a chain grenade launcher. Right? And it just it wrecks stuff. Right. Um, the human, you kind of you get this big combat armor. Uh, kind of similar style weapon, but it's a human version. Uh, but the Berserks, you know, again, they're activated by kills, by kills in a row, and we have three tiers of them. Um, the first and third tier are like faction specific. Mm -hmm. So like the Khmer and they get Cloak as their first tier Berserk. And so they can go invisible and sneak up on people. The humans get a riot shield, like an energy riot shield, which protects them from damage from the front, but kind of exposes them into the back. And that's the, the first level Berserk. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's one of my favorite weapons right there. I like the little close-up there of his eyeballs just bulging oh, out. Oh, I know. Our, yeah, that, <laughs> it is so awesome. Yeah, and so what he's, he's doing right now, he has the upgraded mutator. And what the mutator does is it shoots out this, like, goo, really. It, uh -huh. um, and what it does is it mutates people. When you get enough of it on them, mm -hmm. they mutate into that like weird mutated bomb, essentially. Now the first level when you mutate them, they just fall to the ground and they're a bomb. And you can shoot them and right. like blow up other people around them. And if you upgrade it, they start running after the enemy, mm -hmm. right? And so it's, it's one of the coolest looking effects that I think we have in multiplayer. It's really gross. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cameron, just to go back to the uh, the berserks for a second. Yeah. I know one of the biggest challenges with doing anything like kill streak rewards is that whole the rich get richer, the poor get poorer aspect. Can yeah. you talk a little bit about that the design process behind avo avoiding that? Definitely. Like the snowball effect can definitely uh, you see it. You see it in games that have kill streaks. And one of the big things with that is trying to make it fair. Like a lot of times kill streaks and even in our earlier production we had kill streaks that are things like you, you activate, like for example, the cloak. You activate it, mm -hmm. that is you, you're playing as the cloaked guy. So you can kind of mess up, you know, if someone yeah. detects you, they can kill you. Um, we used to have um, some kill streaks that were like things that launched out of the sky and things that like you would activate, but you had no real control over. Oh, okay. And people couldn't counter that, you know? Right. And so, in kind of evaluating our, our berserks, we decided that we wanted to kind of pull out anything that wasn't player control, mm -hmm. you know, right. that way you still have a chance to fumble. Like, just because he got that mutate to Berserk doesn't guarantee that he's gonna be, like, owning with it. You know, someone could sneak behind him and try to kill him or something like that. So it gives a chance for some back and forth. So it makes it a lot more fair. All right. James, a nice 23 kill to five death spread. Not bad nice. at all. <laughs> we should probably mention that James is playing on a fairly high level uh, profile. All of these cool bits of gear you're not gonna get right at the beginning once you start no, the beta, right? No, no, you gotta, you gotta earn it, you know, I, and as you play, you know, you, you kill people and you get XP, and as you get XP, you get levels. Mm -hmm. And you know, once you start getting levels, um, you start getting points that you can spend and kind of create these custom loadouts. Um, from the get-go, though, from like levels one through five, what we do is we actually have preset loadouts, and they kind of give mm -hmm. you a taste of different gameplay styles. So we have kind of like a sniper kit, we have an assault kit, we have something with the shotgun, and um, they're full loadouts, and they, they kind of just give you a gist for what you can make. And then once you hit level five, you actually can start building your own custom loadouts. Oh, okay. Right, and, and then you can really start tuning your, uh, your gameplay style. So you mentioned that the Berserks are faction specific, but otherwise the weapons and abilities aren't, right? Correct, correct. Okay. Yeah. 
What, what, what was the decision process behind, uh, you know, making sure that they're all on a equal footing with the, the gear and whatnot? Um, I mean, one of the things is obviously it's, it's a lot easier to maintain one set than, than two distinct <laughs> sets, right. right? And it allows us to really focus on, like, making each individual ability and weapon, like, really fun, mm -hmm. you know? And, and that, that's one of our keys is, like, giving that player choice and making sure each thing they choose is super fun to play with. Okay. And as you see, like, he's now on the human side. He, he just earned the riot shield. So as you see, he has this kind of energy shield in front of him, which protects him from from enemy fire. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, and, uh, and just like all other resistances, um, our weapons have both a primary and secondary fire. Uh -huh. um, and like for the mutator, the secondary fire shoots this big gas cloud, and anyone who gets in it will just start morphing and turning and mutating. It's pretty, it's pretty powerful. So you see here, he has the auger. Now the auger is the second tier berserk. It, you get it if you kill six people in a row. Oh. And um, it's the same, it's the one non kind of faction specific berserk because uh -huh. we wanted both teams to have it. And there's, right. it's, so, it's such a unique weapon, you mm -hmm. know? It's like, we didn't want to like split it into two different things. And so both teams get it. Uh, the auger was a tricky thing too, you know? It's like one of those things we actually had early on is a, a weapon you could purchase and equip and things like that. Mm -hmm. But it was just, it could be so powerful when it was fully upgraded that it, it was hard to balance against it. Oh, and okay. But it was like one of those things where we really wanted to have it in the game, you know? I mean, it is a resistance weapon. Right, you know? absolutely. It's like, it, it would be a shame not to have it in there. So after we started kind of looking at our berserks and kind of evaluating, kind of like we talked about before, for things that are more player controlled, we decided that the auger would be just a good choice to bring as a berserk. And this way we can bump it up even more. Mm -hmm. You know, we can make it really powerful because it's a limited time use. Oh, and that's another thing is you, if you kind of noticed, in his weapon wheel, he has three weapons. Well, since we brought the weapon wheel back in multiplayer, as you're playing, you can kick, you can pick up your enemy's weapons that you've killed, right? Oh, okay. So, like, the longer you stay alive, you could have, like, the full set of weapons, mm -hmm. right, and really use it. So it kind of shows a little bit of your progress if you're doing well. James is switching to the Rossmore yeah. right now. He, has, he currently has upgraded Rossmore too, which is awesome. What the upgraded Rossmore does is when you shoot someone, it sets them on fire, and it looks rad. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, it, it, is, it is one of my favorite combinations or favorite weapons. Um, in this particular loadout, um, he Ooh. has uh, the bubble shield active ability. Uh -huh which is this shield right here. And what it lets you do is you can stand in that shield, your friendlies can stand in that shield, mm. and no bullets or anything will go through it. Okay. Um, even the auger won't go through it, right? And so it's a good safety net. Now the thing is, is this is one of the few abilities that doesn't really have like a faction. So you can pop a shield and someone, an enemy can use it too. Okay. Right? And um, so it, it, it has its pluses and minuses. In this particular build right now that he has with the bubble shield and lightning shield, right? The, what the lightning shield does is it it stuns enemies that melee attack you. So if someone comes up and, and tries to melee attack you, they get stunned and they take damage, mm -hmm. right? So if you combine that with the bubble shield and you're playing really defensive, you try to lure someone in to like try to come in your bubble shield to attack you, and then you pop the lightning shield, and well, they're gonna get <laughs> stunned. And because it's such a close quarters, that's all they can really do in there. So it, it's one of those like tricky things. And there's lots of like back and forth like that, and lots of cool little combinations that uh, you can come up with since you can kind of build whatever you want. See, that guy Ooh. just had a lightning shield. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> the fire just never gets old. No, it, it just doesn't. It doesn't <laughs> get old. It's just too much fun. It looks it's such so satisfying <laughs> seeing someone run around. Oh, <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> he got you. <laughs> he got you. And if you look up here too, one of the things we have is like in that death cam, you you kind of saw what the enemy's health was. And we also show what the enemy's loadout was. Oh, okay. you know. And so you, you can like if you're having a nemesis, or you're having a problem with one guy, you can see kind of what his loadout is and try to adjust try yours to accordingly. counter it. Um, and, and one of the other things, you know, since we do have the ability to upgrade and purchase items and to build your custom loadout, 
a lot of times games kind of regulate that just for the lobby. Mm -hmm. And in our game, you can purchase and equip stuff right mid-game. Oh, okay. Right? Now, you won't get it until you respawn, mm -hmm. but you, you don't have to wait to end the game to go purchase something if you've earned points or something like that. So you can really get those new things quick. Okay. Just make sure not to spend too much time in your in the menus because your teammates are depending on you. Well, and that's the thing too. We did actually some testing with it. It was kind of back and forth. It's like, do we want to allow people to do this, or are we kind of worried that there's going to be too many AFKers? You know? Right. And so we did a compromise. We do have a timer. There's like a 30 second timer. Okay. So if you are kind of taking too much time, it'll kick you back into the game. Um. Oh. <laughs> So if you look over there while where that guy had the shield, he had placed down an ammo beacon, which is one of our um, active abilities. And what it does is it gives you uh, ammo, it regenerates your ammo. And if you mm -hmm. upgrade it, it starts regenerating your grenades and all fires, which can be really powerful. Um, I find like one of the cool things is like we have a bunch of different game modes in Resistance, right? And You'll find that like some of these abilities and things like work so awesome in some game modes comparatively mm -hmm. to others. They all have like a really good place, you know. And it's uh oh, so he was getting shot from the back. The shield is good for front defense, but <laughs> someone can take you out if they sneak up behind you. Gotta go after IG Rob Dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this is one of our more open maps. This is definitely, it can be a sniper heavy map, mm -hmm. which is cool. We got a good mix, you know, we have some sniper maps, we have some close quarter maps. We got a little mix of both. <laughs> He's trying to point blank fire. <laughs> I do like your strategy, James, of just charging around with the, uh, the sniper rifle there. <laughs> you just need a bay bayonet attachment, <laughs> which you can get on the carbine if you uh, upgrade it, right? And if you upgrade the carbine, and just to step back, all our weapons have three upgrades. Mm -hmm. um, kind of the same upgrades from single player, and then our abilities have two upgrades. Um, and so, like the carbine, for example, if you upgrade that, its first upgrade um, is the bayonet attachment, which does extra melee damage. Um, and so you, it, it can become a real useful. Oh yeah, sorry. Correct. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> oh, you got him. <laughs> um. And so, like, the, the other thing, like, we've seen and we've talked about the active abilities. One of the other things we have are the passive abilities. Mm -hmm. And what those are, are they're things that kind of help your gameplay style, but you don't have to, like, manage them like active abilities. Right. And so, like, some of the examples um, would be there's something like Tracker. And what Tracker does is it draws the footprints of, like, a footprint trail of the enemies. So okay. if an enemy is running around, you can find some tracks that kind of lead you to the enemy. <laughs> you know, something you don't have to manage, but it's just kind of like a bonus, bonus thing you can have. Uh, we have things that, like, increase your rate of fire, mm -hmm. that give you more armor. Um, we have something like Vital Signs, which will not only show the enemy's health, um, while when you target over them, it'll show what abilities they have, right? And so you can know if, well, maybe I don't want to go up against this guy or not. Um. All right, so that was uh, that was the seaside map, right? Correct. Now you guys actually have uh, one more map going out in the yep, beta. In the beta, yeah. Right. And that is uh, Bogota, Colombia, and that is a like the train yard, the train yard map. I think is what it's called. All right, and speaking of uh, Bogota, the train yard map, uh, here we are checking out the uh, the chain reaction game mode. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, chain reaction is one of our new game modes in uh, Resistance Three. Um, as you see, it's it's a capture node kind of uh, game mode, um, and in this case, what it is is there is three capture points, and what your team is trying to do is they're trying to capture the points in a linear order, mm -hmm. and once they get to the last point, uh, they need to activate it. And kind of the story or the mythos behind this is that the Camarins are trying to open a wormhole, right? And these are like little portable wormhole generators, right? 
And what they're trying to do is once they capture them and they get to the end, they activate the last node and it aligns the worm, wormhole generators and opens up a big wormhole. Okay. And as humans, what you're trying to do is obviously stop that. Mm -hmm. um, and when you start capturing all the nodes and you capture the very last node, you deactivate, bleh, sorry, you deactivate <laughs> the wormhole and you call in the reinforcements. Um, so again, it's, it's linear, so you have, to, you have to capture them in order. Um, and so right now they're on the like the first node, which is kind of like the center node that starts out in neutral that both teams have to go and fight over. Um. Now the uh, the different game modes are they map specific or are they map agnostic? They're map agnostic. Okay. Um, like for our, our main set of maps, we want to make sure like all our game modes supported them. Um, and yeah, so like. He's trying to go get the node right now once he buck shots this guy. Do it, James. <laughs> oh, do Clum it. Clum a little bit. <laughs> there you go. Nice. Bob shield. <laughs> I'd imagine that the <laughs> close quarters nature of this game mode means the Rossmore is pretty effective. It can definitely be pretty effective. Uh, but you know, you have things like the bubble shield and like the whitening shield and other things like that 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 are uh, good counters and blockers. Um, but yeah, for this mode, like this particular kit he has right now is a great one. You know, you can pop a bubble shield and kind of sit and protect the node, and they have to come in your shield to try to take you out. Okay. And again, since he has lightning shield, a lot of time when people get in that bubble, they're gonna just instinctively try to melee attack, and you can usually catch them off guard. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, your friend just got him. <laughs> So this is perfect. Cloak and capturing the node. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay, so they just captured the node, and now they're going to go and move on to the, to the next node. And so how it works is now that they've captured it, they still have to defend that node because the other team can go and capture it. So they're trying to attack one node and defend the other node. Oh, okay. Okay, so, so they, they have to like definitely split their resources wisely. Now one thing... Um, that I think Resistance 3 has a lot of. There's a lot of back and forth and a lot of counters. You know, there's not one, like, amazing kit. Mm -hmm. You know, so for example, right now he's playing with the, the bubble shield and the lightning shield and the shotgun, right? And let's say you're fighting him and you're having a bunch of problems trying to get through that shield, right? Well, you can go and purchase and equip an EMP grenade, and when you throw it at that shield, it'll take that shield down for six seconds or X amount of time. And we have a lot of counters like that in the game. Like, for example, you saw the Mutator earlier, right? And which is an epic weapon. Mut mutates people and sends them running. Now, we have an ability called Hazmat Suit, right? And when you, when you equip that, you don't take any type of status damage, right? So it'll block someone from trying to mutate you. And so we have a lot of back and forth like that. You know, a lot of counters. Um, and, you know, like, that's one of the main reasons we did the death screen like this. Is so you can see what your enemy has and, like, be able to formulate a strategy to okay. attack him. As you see, they got to defend this while trying mm -hmm. to trying to get that other node. Uh -oh. Juicy. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> that actually uh, makes me wonder: How did you guys look at the weapons from the single-player campaign and decide which ones would work and not work in a multiplayer environment? You know, f me personally, I want to bring them all in. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, like. I feel like they could all generally be balanced, you know. And obviously, the auger, like I talked about earlier, it was pretty hard. We mm -hmm. we just couldn't get it to where it was kind of equal with the rest of the weapons. Um, but everything else, we got in and we got balanced. And I feel like they're doing pretty good right now as far okay. as overall balance. Um, you know, we had, we adjust a couple. You know, we obviously adjust some damage and some rate of fire mm -hmm. things like that um, to make it more MP friendly and balanced. But yeah, I mean, I wanted to carry over as much as a, as much as we could. Now they're on the last node. Getting to the final node here. So with this node, you have to interact with it to activate the sequence, and it takes five seconds to, to activate it. Um, and then there's like a 20, 30 second countdown before the game is over. So you, okay. the enemy team has a chance to come back and try to like mm -hmm. deactivate um, that node. <laughs> that was 
Leaper Corpse. <laughs> you know, that's a, one of the other big things with the resistance multiplayer is we are resistance. We have the resistance universe. So yeah. there's things that we can do in resistance that other games can't, you know? And that's one of the things we really wanted to play up. You know, we can do Leaper Corpse. We can have Leapers popping out of you. <laughs> we can do exotic weapons and things like that, you know? Like, and just really show off our universe. Alignment sequence started. So now they just gotta hold it down and defend. I'll get him. We saw James just use the doppelganger there when he was activating the node. Is that a strategy you would recommend? Buy yourself a couple definitely, potential seconds? Definitely. Yeah, I, and you know, one of, one of my favorite builds I call the misdirection build. You have doppelganger and you have the decoy. Uh -huh. And they're both you know, on either side of the active abilities. So yeah, you pop that and you can put a little decoy over there <laughs> and uh, you'll buy yourself some time instead of nice. just trying to come attack. Oh. <laughs> All right. Those leapers, watch out for those guys. <laughs> They're no joke. Yeah, they can definitely switch up your strategy a little bit. You spend so much time on looking for enemies of the same height as you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't notice them scurrying along on the ground until they jump into your <laughs> face. Yeah, and one by themselves isn't, isn't too big of a deal, but when you get a bunch of them around you, they can start uh, chipping away at you very quick. Oh, there you go. Pop a shield. Oh, no. <laughs> And so, like, other things you can unlock, too, and we have a couple of these unlocks in betas. Extra skins mm -hmm. and titles and things like that. Uh, so, just extra little character customizations. Um, one of the things about this game mode, too, is there's no timer in this game mode. How it works is essentially tickets or reinforcements. Okay? Oh, okay. So, everyone's, each team starts with about, like, 80 tickets or something. And so, uh, the two win conditions are essentially you know, capture all the nodes mm -hmm. and a activate the last node, or be the last team with reinforcements. Oh, okay. So it looks like the Chimera is ahead in, uh, in both ways right now. Yep. Let's see if they can't get that last node. I know, so close. <laughs> Just gotta save his bubble shield. <laughs> Yeah, that bubble shield can be a savior for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that cloak helps out. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, I think our friends already started it. Oh yeah, it's looking good. All right. Nice. Victory, there we go. All right, Cameron, well, that was a lot of fun. Thanks a lot for dropping Definitely. by the studio and showing us what the Resistance 3 beta is all about. Can you go ahead and let everybody know out there how they can get their hands on it? Yeah, in coming weeks, the, the beta will be available to PlayStation Plus subscribers and uh, people who bought specially barked editions of SOCOM 4. All right, there you go. And in case you guys don't fall into either of those two categories, we'll also be giving away uh, keys to download the Resistance 3 beta from the PlayStation Network as well. So until then, thanks a lot for watching. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.